Ken Daniels, would you please have the real Lenny as a guest on the Teal's pot? He, he, he won't show up. Trust me. Ken, you're, you're smarter than that. Come on, Ken. Do you really know anything about Lenny? You're, you're smarter than that. You really believe Lenny is going to go live with me if I ask him to. You, you're... You really believe that? Forgive me if I sound, I'm already getting fucking irritated, but you really fucking believe that? Given Lenny's history, given Lenny's history, you really, I want you to tell everyone on here that you really believe I asked Lenny to go live with me, he'll go live with me. It's been a while. Oh my God, it's really him. Yeah, it's been a few years. How you been? All is well, Lenny. How about you? Good. Uh, how are the kids? Uh, they're getting smarter and they're eating more. I'm, That's a good sign. I'm already, I'm already close to getting the second one out of the house. You know, I, I got three. I got three daughters. One, we already got one married a few years ago out of the house. She's still with the same man, thank God. And uh, the second one, we're we're almost ready to get her out of the house too. We're getting them all married, Lenny. I, I know it sounds crazy in America right now, but we're making sure that our daughters get married and move out of the house, and well, they married, serve their husband well. Married early and straight. You're like living in the 1950s. What used yeah, to be cookie yeah. cutter. You're like the, you know, exception to the rule now. <laughs> Len Lenny, this may scare people. Our oldest daughter, uh -huh. I knew and met her husband before she did. Wow. So it that, sounds like an old arranged marriage, which are good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way. So, so what's, what's going on with Lenny? Uh, well, just my mom is cancer, so it's got to accompany her more doctor's appointments, chemotherapy, and a lot of things she really can't do around the house anymore. So, But other than that, I'm still doing a few lives a week, doing a few videos, meeting some maniacs coming down to visit, and just basically doing a lot of research on different subjects, educating myself, realizing that I really didn't learn much going to even Catholic private school and grade school. And I certainly didn't learn anything productive in high school, public school. Come to the sad realization. But thank God for the internet. You know, it eliminates the need for a library and encyclopedia set, all that kind of stuff. Well, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that about your mom, and I'll, I'll keep her in my thoughts and prayers. My mom Thanks. is going through something similar. My mother has M4 leukemia. Wow, she, that's something. Something normally, someone maybe our age would be able to push through that. But since yeah. she's seventy, she's had multiple operations, and she's been dealing with cancer, all types, all types of cancer for the past thirty plus years. Good. It's Good it's God. up in the air. It's just one of those things. Wow, I've never heard of such a length. And to have that on the back of her mind, but she's still pulling through. That's so good to hear. Yeah, yeah she's, still, she's a tough, stubborn broad. Yeah, I miss your father, too. He was a tough guy, and I would have felt really bad when he passed because I just got to meet him and know you guys from that gym up there in West Palm, which I really don't go to anymore. You still training out there? You know, I know I don't have an L.A. Fitness membership. I have a Crunch and a uh, Cookie Cutter Planet Fitness membership. Oh, uh, yeah, that's Crunch is good. I, I, I have still... For I still have. That's have good that, for now. I, mean, LA. I might get a retro fitness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might get a retro fitness one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, they had a, aren't they creative on naming these gym franchises? It takes a whole why, bunch why of college-educated businessmen to do that, huh? <laughs> what was the last time someone named the gym like the Dungeon? You know, something like that. <laughs> It, it completely opened windows and open doors. No AC. 
<laughs> yeah, hey, just, you know, cookie cutter uh, businesses, establishments, companies. They're not very creative, I'll say that. Oh, so, so Lenny, um, you know, other than that, I mean, how, how is your health? I still have considered congestive heart failure. I do take a diuretic or two if I feel the need, but I try to naturally, obviously with getting out in the sun and sweating, sweating at the gym, I'm able to keep it under control to a point. Uh, I refuse to take any heart medication. Uh, and I refuse to, I really don't want to go to a doctor. I don't really need to hear their negativity. And I found out that time and time again, and I've been told time and time again by how many doctors over the years, starting with, I'm going to need a liver transplant 20 years ago. He went to put me on a list. I'm, I'm going to die. I've been told many times that if I didn't take medication. And here I am 10, 15 years later. And the last time I was hospitalized, which... If the water retention gets really bad, I'll check in to get the intravenous Lasix, which takes about 30 or 40 pounds of water out of me in a few days. And it seems like every year I pretty much got to go in and do that. But at the same time, they want me to stay on the diuretics, which I won't do, and take a whole slew of medicines. And the last time I was in there, the doctor told me straight out, you're going to die. And I took it offense. I was offended. And I says, who do you think you are, God? I said to me, I, you're going to die if I put my hand on you right now. And, I, and he took, is that a threat? I said, no, it's not. I said, let's start back to where, you know, helping me out. And we set up an appointment. But then I said to myself, I just don't need to hear the negativity. Uh, best stuff. I'm saying 18 forever. I'm training to think positively. And I think they use too many scare tactics. Uh, not only to get on the med medications, but it's just a business model. You know, I never took any type of vaccinations whatsoever. I know a lot of people that were forced to, to see loved ones that were hospitalized or in yep. nursing homes or whatever. And I, and the people that lost jobs, that's one of the horrible tragedies that definitely shed a light on for me and many others about how you have to take care of your your own health you're responsible for it and they're just a last ditch resort of course i'll go to a doctor if i'm bleeding or get patched up or i need some type of immediate surgery but for general health i'm going to do it on my own the the way the medical field is is now they're not it's not that they're not interested they can't get paid unless they have us on some type of program and medicating us they don't get yep. paid to cure us. They just don't. No there was kidding. a doctor that came out recently saying that if, let's say, for instance, every doctor that had a practice refused to give vaccinations to their patients or offer it to them, they wouldn't be able to stay in business. They just wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to have a practice. Yeah. Um, that but, does it all right there. Exactly. And so now... Me, I'm going to claim ignorance as far as what, where, you, where you're at medically. The only thing I'm going to say is this. The one thing that has been proven time in and time out, where, whether someone has been diagnosed that, that, that they have well, high blood pressure or, or diabetes yeah. or yeah. Uh, uh, there's something wrong with their kidneys, there's something wrong with their liver, there's something wrong with their heart, they got cancer, they got this or they got that. The one thing that has been proven over and over again, the people that get diagnosed with whatever, the more active that they stay, the longer that they live. That's, that's what I've yeah. noticed. Yes. You're going, you're going into the other direction in that. You're staying active, you're getting sun, you're sweating. You're going to the gym. You're doing this, doing that, and you're not staying still. For for and and, and there's there's an ongoing joke in in the, in the fitness and bodybuilding community, which turns turns turning out to be true. You're going to outlive all these guys. That's what it's turning <laughs> out to be. Well, it, it, I mean, it shouldn't it's be funny, will. but it, it's looking that way. It's an unfortunate well, it's thing. Will, you're outliving definitely. these guys. 
Yes, uh, but I think the main thing is keeping that positivity and everybody saying to themselves, I'm 18 forever and staying away from that negativity. I don't need to go in and have a doctor tell me the, all these things are wrong with me. And I remember as, how many times I was brought in to see psychologists in high school and in the military. They're saying, give me all these terms, your ADHD, your bipolar, this, that, and the other. And I feel bad for those going around that actually say that. I even hated telling you at the beginning I'm considered to be in heart failure. Well, if I was in heart failure, I'm out there biking my 310-pound body out in the 90-degree humidity and going up and doing squats at Crunch and a whole leg work up and getting there, biking back to the bus stop, which is a few miles. And then getting off that stop and biking it back home in the heat. So I guess that's not me. I don't know why I said that, but I think that's the main thing, the positivity of saying to yourself, I'll prove them wrong, and they don't know what they're talking about. Now, Lenny, not to interrupt you, but one of the frequent things that in, in my lives, and you're, you're, you might hear it, the live is now official in that we have sirens in the background because I live in the city of Riviera Beach and the yes. live is never, never official until we hear sirens. And so now that's twice already we've heard sirens and Lenny is here with us. It can't get any more official. <laughs> so Well, thanks. I'm honored to be on. I'm glad that you got me on. And I just want to tell you, Gabe, I consider you a great friend, a brother from day one, part of the Misfits. And I like your presentation. Your voice it's to me and i'll say the same thing about vince goodrum both of you have excellent interview voices podcast voices whatever better than guys you know broadcasters on tv sportscasters you have a tone that's so easy to understand and almost hypnotic and drags you in i just think that you're definitely a hidden talent and keep pushing eventually some sponsorship someone will find you and bring you on hey, you never know. Oh, the, yeah. Thanks, Lenny. You never know that you know the great Doctor Michael Savage didn't make it on terrestrial radio until he was in his fifties. So. Yeah. But you know, thank, and, thank you. Thanks, man. It, it, oh, it's one hundred percent true, you're, and I've listened to kind. a lot. And, I'm, and I was. You're too kind. No, I'm not. I'm just telling the truth on that. Uh, so, what are your? future how many more years do you think you'll work with the same company uh what what my lenny what my goal is and my wife thinks i'm insane and so does my family my goal is i want to work for whatever company will have me just like the, the the old cubans work in the middle of the cane fields until they're in their 90s and That's a cool. lot of people yeah. have a hard time believing that they're out there in the cane fields with the machete and they're chopping away like they're 20 and they're in their 90s in the hot sun all day smoking cigars and drinking Cuban coffee. That's that's what I want. I want to work until I drop dead. Yeah, that's just me. That Russian vodka. <laughs> 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 I don't know if they still get it for a, a discount anymore, but who knows, they probably do. Yeah, that's a great way to go. That's a healthy way. and uh, You got to stay productive and you're out here helping your fellow man and hats off to you. That's what life's all about. Too much selfishness. It's everybody wanting to get high. That's a problem with Riviera Beach. And I know it's revitalized itself quite a bit. There's a few beautiful areas up there, but the majority of those people are just so selfish. I want to get what's mine. They want to get high. The men, they want to get laid when they want, you know, and everybody wants a free check so they can eat what they want, drink when they want, get high what they want, do what they want. You know, I... I before you go, go, Lenny, I want you to know this, and I want everyone else to know this. As far as the city of Riviera Beach and what people normally either, they'll either see on the Internet or the news, something that, that happens where it's a melee, and it's just a melee. Yeah. A bunch of young people beating the crap out of each other. Here comes, you'll notice the one that's, that I refer to as the bitch ninja, the one that all of a sudden shows up in the screen and they start stomping, right? Uh, here in the city of Riviera Beach, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but the only reason why that is not happening at a high frequency here in the city of Riviera Beach is because all the people that live here 
that are my age and older, and I'm talking about the black folk, yeah. the ones that worked all their lives, they got still have their own home, they're living off their retirement, they still have this, they still drive the same car they had 20, 30 years ago, and guess what? No pun intended, they're packing heat. Yeah. And they keep all these young people in check. And they don't have any problem telling them, you can go ahead and act crazy, do whatever you want, throw whatever you want. It comes my direction, a bullet's going to go in your direction. They let them know straight up. And yep. it's their own people. So I think I live in the safest city in the world. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. I know those cops have a good way of covering things up when they get out of hand. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. Yeah, I'm going to spill the beans. <laughs> All right, hey, man, thanks for coming on, man. You're, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Let's keep up the good work, Gabe. I'll talk to I you will. Soon. Take care. You too. I guess I owe Ken Daniels an apology. I never thought that that would happen in a million years. Uh, Ken, I'm sorry. I owe you an apology. I sincerely apologize. I'm sorry. I just, I honestly, maybe it's because I'm so cynical that I wouldn't believe in a million years that would fucking happen. 